The Word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit, and of the joints and the marrow, and is a critic of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Welcome everyone to our daily doctrinal Bible study through the YouTube of the Vic Balbidu Evangelistic Ministry. And uh, in preparation for our study of the Word of God, the next few moments will be devoted to silent prayer, the objective of which is to make sure that we are filled with the Holy Spirit as we approach the Word of God. So silent prayer gives you the privacy of the priesthood and makes the option of rebound possible if necessary. But for you, unbeliever, the issue you are facing is not rebound or confession, but by faith in Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Therefore, let us pray. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are here once again because we love your word, because we are members of your royal family through our faith in your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Because from eternity past, our life has had meaning and purpose and definition. Because we are commanded to take in the word daily just as we assimilate physical food daily. And we recognize that this is our briefing. This is our means of growth. This is the means of glorifying Thee. We are left here in this world for this purpose. And therefore we ask that through the ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, You enlighten us so that this purpose might be fulfilled today. We now pray that you give us the necessary concentration and focus to the things you're going to teach us today. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Okay. First of all, the Christian way of life is a supernatural way of life. I suppose by now, you already know how to distinguish the difference between the Christian life and the spiritual life. By the way, before we go on, the title of our study is Eusebia Stage, which means godliness. Okay. Now going back to our topic, the Christian life is the title of every person who trusted Christ as Savior. While the spiritual life is the stage attained by the Christian as his spiritual relationship and rapport with God. He has reached that status after following God's perfect design through filling of the Holy Spirit, through spiritual momentum, through fulfilling the protocol plan for his life. He has reached the high ground of spiritual growth, play Roma stage, where he enjoys his Eusebia, godliness. He is declared as good as God is good. Now don't get me wrong when I say that he is declared as good as God is good. That's different than saying he is as good as God. Besides, he is a winner believer. He is an invisible hero. He lives the life beyond gnosis. Now, <clears throat> the Pleroma stage, the Jesuron stage, is the stage called in Greek as doxa ho theo, maximum glorification of God. You know what? Our spiritual life is not our personality, not our traits, not our character, 
but it is the status of our mind, the dynamics of our mental attitude. Our spiritual life depends upon Bible doctrine that is ruling our mind. Thus, the Christian way of life is a mental attitude life. Always remember the balance of residency, Bible doctrine, and filling of the Holy Spirit. After salvation, these two things must be our priority should we wish to live the dynamic and fantastic spiritual life. Again, apart from it, we have no spiritual life. So after salvation, our scale of value should be Bible doctrine, period. Remember the principle? Life is fabulous with metabolized Bible doctrine, but miserable without it. I have a question. Are you happy as a believer? Is your happiness based on the following? Facebooks, friends, or Instagrams, friends, messenger friends, loved ones, wife, husband, children, money, material things, travel, fame, etc. Now, <clears throat> true happiness can only be experienced by a believer when he is residing, functioning, and in momentum inside his royal palace. We call the operational divine dynasphere filled by the Holy Spirit. He is free from mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, and over sins. That's how to be happy, really happy in life, nothing else. So let's ask ourselves the following questions. Is Bible doctrine my number one priority? Am I doing this routinely? Do I organize my life? Do I make good and right decisions from the position of strength? Am I persistent in my daily spiritual momentum? You see, as I always say, the Christian way of life is a mental attitude life, a supernatural way of life, and as such, it requires a supernatural way of execution. So question, is Bible doctrine now circulating in your stream of consciousness? Now, <clears throat> we should always remember the spiritual skills, feeling of the Holy Spirit, metabolized Bible doctrine, and God's ten problem-solving devices. Also remember the principle, the rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting. We believers are mandated in 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the way to become a new man in Colossians 3.10. We are to be renewed in knowledge after the image of Him that created Him, Colossians 3.10. Why? Because he who is now in Christ is a new creature. But watch out. This is not felt. You cannot feel it. It is the believer's current positional truth. It is the believer's current condition. What are his current conditions? He is eternally saved. He is imputed God's perfect righteousness. His name is written in the Lamb's book of life. He was given 39 irrevocable absolutes. In Colossians 3.10, it speaks of the believer's new life, life beyond gnosis, his unique spiritual life, eusebia, or godliness. Remember, life beyond gnosis. You see, the Christian Living his life as a Christian uses his mind. We have learned that Gnosis doctrine has no spiritual value. Only Epinosis doctrine has spiritual validity. That is why 
God mandates every believer to metabolize Gnosis doctrine and transform it to become a Pinosis doctrine. Remember Operation Z? Now, <clears throat> again, only a Pinosis doctrine is usable in the Christian life, not Gnosis doctrine. Only a Pinosis doctrine can be used inside the divine atmosphere, not Gnosis. Remember the mandate in Colossians 3.10, put on the new man, which is renewed unto knowledge. Sophia. That's why we repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat the teaching of doctrine, to inculcate doctrine and let it sink in into our mind. Here is another principle. The rate of learning should exceed the rate of forgetting. Also remember the three arrogance complex, self-justification, self-absorption, and self-deception. Paul has said, be imitators of God. Ephesians 4.23 also says, and they, and that ye be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Remember, be doers of the word, not only hearers of the word. How? By utilizing God's divine assets and the various doctrinal rationales like the plan of God rationale, the faithless life rationale, the Christian way of life rationale, and all the doctrinal rationales.